Gotta go! Get back, get back to your right, get back, get back. To be a head coach in the NBA, you need to be a leader of men. The one voice that stands out above them all. But the responsibility of a franchise cannot just sit on one person's shoulders. Oh, box, oh, box out. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Get a good one, get a good one. Yeah, yeah, Goose. The Wizards coaching staff is made up of an eclectic group of basketball lifers who have had different experiences on the hardwood, but who are now united, working together as a group to bring their knowledge and a little bit of energy. I always say this as a coach, we have the pause button, rewind, fast forward, didn't do this, didn't do that. Uh, that's our advantage, but uh, I think that's why I'm up a lot trying to give, uh, you know, different uh, signals, calls of what we're doing, why we're doing it. And they're just trying to also hear from them as well. How do we make this game their job a little bit easier as we go through it because they hit so fast and we have to tap into those experiences and be ready to maybe help them apply some of those things. Maybe it's a couple clips, you know, that you look at. Maybe it's, you know, pulling something different. You know, maybe it's something on the court. It's a feel and it's almost like the good basketball karma. You know, when the ball starts moving, hey, the extra pass usually is good results, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like a message like that or defensively, maybe a rotation. Somebody being a low man weak side pulling over or somebody stepping over to take a charge. Just trying to paint that picture for them to see it, you know, and, and that's in real time for the most part, but just give them that information from what I saw. And then we also now had the technology where we had the iPads and the um, laptops behind the bench so they can also see it as well. So next time they see that action, they'll be ready. Ah, yes, technology. Basketball has so much happening so quickly. So extra set of eyes with the ability to show players what they are talking about can be vital. There's going to be roughly 125 possessions on each side of, in a game. You're looking at a lot of possessions. A lot of things happen. A lot of things aren't exactly the way it was scripted and what you thought it was going to be. The game provides that. The speed of the game is such that we see things when it slows down and on the film. We have to be able to go back to them and look at the speed they're used to seeing the game at and, and you know, how quickly their reads, you know, come to them and develop. Speaking from experience goes a long way. And for the former players on staff, a lot has changed since their day. You know, for the adjustments, we had to wait till halftime. And then halftime, you get those adjustments, and then now you had to remember, you know what I'm saying, in the second half for the most part. Now you can pretty much see it as soon as the play happens and uh, make those adjustments a lot sooner and quicker. Hold it! Get on it! And one! And one! A to B! A to B! I feel like everything I learned doing my community service, trying to build community, is what makes me a good coach. My ability to connect with people, individuals from different aspects, different walks, different, different socioeconomic backgrounds as well, um, and tied that together with my years of experience of playing overseas and just learning what it, the human plight is all about is what makes me the man I am today. Coaching in this league is not easy. It takes a lot of hard work and years of experience to be at the NBA level. Thankfully today, the G League exists. I was blessed with the, the experience of being a head coach in the G League. And I really, I took a lot of that experience and I just placed it into this NBA setting. And I think without that experience, I'm a big advocate for the G League, for players and coaches alike, or anyone that wants to get into the NBA. It's a great foothold to get in and it's a great learning experience. It is a crash course in um, professional basketball. You know, Ryan Richmond's coached in the G League as well. Pat Delaney, you know, Joseph Blair. We've all coached in the G League. The experience is so valuable, I think, to you as a coach, but I think then you're able to take those experiences to the organizations too and things that, you know, have been uh, helpful, you know, with the players or for the coaches. A family field with this staff of assistant coaches, all working together for the sake of this franchise, no matter how long they've been doing this. I've told people this and they kind of laugh, but the longer I do it, the more questions I have. You know, you just keep getting into it, but I think your experiences come back to you. You see things and, you know, you recognize, okay, I've seen this before, and hopefully, you know, we use our experiences to help the players. I think a lot of times for coaches, we get credit for things we shouldn't get credit for, and uh, it always starts with the player. When you talk about player development across this league, like the first word of it tells you with the player. The one thing that I ask every season, is, did, I, did I help the players? That's where I will go. I want that answer to be, you know, it may be for all the players in different ways too, that I was able to help impact and help, help the players along 
in the plane and with their, their careers, that it, you know, to give something. Jason, of all the interviews that I've done this season, I must admit, talking to each of those assistant coaches was one of my favorite things to do because they all are so passionate about it, about being stars in their role for the collective goal of the team. And you think about the math. You're looking at around 75 to 100 years combined yeah. of coaching experience. Yeah. And as a former leaguer yourself, what's the value that you find in having that much knowledge at your fingertips? You know, you try and utilize that as much as possible. You want to utilize your assistant coaches and have that daily work with them and kind of pick their brains of what they're seeing from a different perspective, but also what they're trying to help you with and try to understand what are the shots that I'm going to get on the offense? What are the defensive concepts that I need to really be grasping? And where do I need to be on the defensive end? And that's where you're really relying on your assistant coach to kind of point you in the right direction to figure out what the head coach wants run from you and what the front office wants from you. And then really portray that to the player because the more you do that in your pregame workouts, your pre-practice workouts, and you really get that benefit of doing those things and have that transfer over into games, mm. that's where a coach is like, you know what, this guy gets it. The, the assistant is portraying to the coach, hey, yeah. I've got this guy, he's reliant to play great defense, he'll, he'll give you a bucket on offense. If you can go out there and do that consistently, not only does it make you as a player look good, but your assistant coach looks even better as well. 